So, one could say I've kind of run into one of my first problems, and it certainly is by no means my first problem because I've had to deal with a lot of supply chain issues. Yeah, lots of different issues in building out an expedition camper. We're on to build series number 55, and today is a big problem that I have to solve and work through. So thank you for joining and watching and subscribing and sharing with others. And certainly let's dive into this and solve the problem. Hey, fellow campers, how are you? So I'm in the process of building out my cabinetry and I'm going to have to make a small change after I already glued some of it down. And this is due to basically some parts coming in at a different dimension than what was their specifications or that had been had changed from what their specifications were. So let me walk through with you and talk through a little about what I'm doing. So I'm going to make a slight modification of it, assessing whether to modify the cabinets or just modify my layout. And so here we go. Let's go into it. It was a pretty big one. It's basically mounting in the electric the batteries and so hence the electrical system and it's the main just DC distribution and how it gets laid out and of course the cabinetry framing around it. So it's a pretty big one. It's a pretty hard one to change and I've already bought the batteries so I'm stuck with now these batteries in the dimensions that they actually came in which are again different than what I had anticipated. So here we go. Let's talk through this problem and figure out a solution. Here's my problem. And yes, I've run into a lot of little challenges along the way here building this out. It's just a problem. They're just, they're just, they're just changes that have to lead to new solutions. So to keep my positive on this, because everything, you know, there's always little challenges along the way. So I ordered two of these Chins batteries, did the full battery test on them. They performed great. They were a great price point. So I, after testing them, I went ahead and said, you know what? Let me go ahead and just buy two more. So I did that, and I bought two more because I wasn't entirely convinced I needed, I wanted six. I knew that four would be enough, six would be ideal, and I had space for six. And so I made the decision a little bit after that, I bought those next two to buy the final two to make it a total of six of these chins, 300 amp hour, 12 volt batteries. I planned to put them three abreast and three abreast, and so each pair would be longitudinal pair and they would butt up against each other like this. Let me show you. Oh, just move some batteries around here. All right, so like that. So they butt up against each other such as this. And so that my positive and negative on these, this battery pair would be bussed together. And then this positive and negative would of course be wired into my Lynx distributor, which would run essentially like this in two pairs uh, that would go across and so each of these would be really short runs that would feed into the Lynx distributor and also allow my ability to get my loads in and out from each side. However, as you can see, I've got a little bit of an issue here in that they don't fit and the cabinets already glued down. And I'm off by, just call it, just under an inch. And so it got me scratching my head and I realized that the first two batteries I bought, I don't know if you can see that from there, but they're a little bit built, slightly different case. And so the next two pair I built were not the same dimensions. They have a slightly different case. They're exactly the same height, exactly the same length, but their width is an inch wider. So this battery is actually an inch wider than this one. Now everything else is identical about them and the specs. There's nothing else that's any different. So they got the same VMS, they got the same cells, everything else internal. This side to go with a slightly different case. But that unfortunately screwed me because I built my dimensions specifically on the original two batteries that I built and putting them up, butting up against each other. I actually pulled them out of the box. I butted up against each other in all ways they could be butted up against each other, sides or ends, and measured how they would differ whether when they're butted up against each other in the sides and ends versus just their actual spec. And the reason why is because when they get butted up against each other end to end or so forth, these are not, the, the new cases are pretty rectangular, pretty cubical, right? But the old cases were not. They have a little protrusion, they got a little angle there. And so consequently, when they butt up against each other, because their width might be eight and a half inches wide, they didn't actually add up to 19 inches wide when they were butt up against each other a little bit less than that, or some other slightly different dimension. So I actually took that into account, put that in my spreadsheet, calculate out what their dimensions would be, and built my cabinetry exactly to accommodate those. Now that's glued down, it's in there, solid so this is this that cabinet when i move it it just moves the whole camper a little bit it doesn't move the cabinets at all that's going to lock in those big water tanks and the batteries and of course that becomes also the base for the benches but since i can't fit them in this way now and by the way the other two would just come up just like i have it seen here essentially just like that and so i'd have three pairs and three pairs going across 
So I have two options. I can either change my configuration, so I've done a little battery Tetris, or I can, option two, is literally take a multi-tool with a very thin blade, a caulk cutting blade I call it, and run it underneath between the floor and this piece and cut this base piece out and move these verticals inward that one inch and then move that piece back one inch. And I can do that, no doubt about it, that can be done. But it's work and then I gotta clean up the floor, clean up the piece, re, you know, caulk back in a new piece or glue, it, glue back in a new piece and of course change my little configuration here as well, these pieces. And that'll give me one inch on each side. And I can, I, I've got that one inch where, where the water tanks are. I intentionally left a little bit of a gap there to allow for some bowing out of the water tanks. If the tank doesn't, it, it'll be fine. It'll be contained within that, that this cabinet and it, a little bit of bowing is not going to matter. It can bow in other places as well. That's the decision to make. And that's work. It's basically taking away the work I've already done, I've already put into it and rebuilding it, spending time and effort on it. I already have a long list of things to do in the cabinetry and stuff here. And so that's a downside. And of course, there's always a risk that something won't come out as perfect or clean. And, and it, it's just effort, right, to do all that. So I got to make the call whether I do that or just lay them out in this other. Oh. <laughs> so the, <laughs> this is a layout that I found actually works best with the batteries in the cabinetry as I have them installed right now. And so the way this work is that. These two batteries right here would be interconnected with a just a solid piece of copper bar. And so that'll make these two a pair of 24 volts. Do the same with these two pair connected here. And then these two would also be connected right here. And then all of them would have their positive go into a Lynx distributor that will be or a whole bank of them, four of them lined up right along here. So a red coming in for my positive, a negative coming in. For this battery, this pair that's 24 volt coming in to a port and on and on and on all the way down. And so that'll keep all of my wires nice and uniform, nice and straight, very short, little, call it a foot and a half long for each of these wires or less really. It's just a little over a foot long. By the time we have the lugs on each side, the probably wire length is probably about exactly a foot long going into each one of these links. And so that'll also spread out the battery loads or the battery power going, spreading out across the link distributor, which is what I want, so that also my loads are spread out as well. I don't want all the battery power in just one spot, and then my loads kind of continue on down that, unless I make sure my loads scale down, right? I don't want a big load at the end of a bus and the batteries on the other end of that bus. I'd really rather have them all be distributed. Batteries distributed throughout and loads distributed throughout, or have low battery load on one end and trickling down to smaller loads as we get to the other end of that bus bar. So this is pretty the ideal setup. I don't have to think about so much about where or how a bigger load is connecting in or not. So that's a benefit. These two would just connect in a positive and negative coming straight in like that. I can put my battery disconnects, which I'm gonna have just in line with each one of these negatives. So that works out well, and those will all be accessible from underneath my dinette floor here, which will slide out as planned in order to access all this. The downside of this setup is I can't just easily slide out a battery pair, such as this pair here, which I could just slide right out. So that if that pair goes bad, or one of the batteries in that section, go, these, this group comes, goes bad, I can just pull both of them out and replace them at some point in time in the future. So that's the downside. It's not as pretty of a wiring setup as I was planning on doing in some respects. In some respects, it's actually probably better. The downside is that my wires go into this side of the camper, have, a, have to correct travel essentially across the top of the batteries. Not a big deal. They'll still be elevated above on a small little platform so that they're not necessarily, it's still easy to remove the batteries at some point in time down the road. The links will also be mounted to a little platform above the batteries as well. So again, same thing. The batteries can still be slid out and all the DC distribution all stays in place. So it works out fine. In some respects, I actually can take advantage of the benefit that this adds a little bit of length to my dinette floor, which is not a terrible thing. But these batteries now are just over 42, about 42 and a quarter inches long. And four of these links distributors all gang together in a row are roughly about 43 inches. And that's counting the 
buses on the end here that have to protrude out. Obviously, the other buses would be embedded in. So when I line all four of these up together, yeah, I'll have basically them coming out to right about here. So my step and so forth for my dinette will just stick out just a little bit into my kitchen cabinet. It's not a terrible thing. It does take up a little bit of the kitchen cabinet, but only at the bottom here. So that's not really a big deal. That takes up just a, call it an inch or two of linear length of my cabinet kitchen cabinet at the bottom. It's a place where I can also embed some other mechanicals, uh, which on this side will be water pump and things like that. And this side can do some, some fuse panels and things like that. It'll be inside of there, accessible when you pull the drawers out. So that way it'll be a good place to have all that, the weight down low and kind of buried in the cabinet where you can access it, but out of the way and really close to where the loads are going to be just above it in the kitchen cabinet or in the dining or further on to the, you know, elsewhere they go. So in a lot of respects, it's a very good layout. It, it works really well. So I'm okay with that. I'm content with that. I, I, can, I, can, I can live with this setup, I guess you could say. And that's easier than what I believe will be having to remove the lower section of this cabinet that I've already glued in, which I've already done a small section at here so I can out allow my pass-through for my water tank uh, to cross over at this point at the same elevation as the floor which is really key to me so I know that I'm really getting as much of that water tank water out of it as possible that I'm essentially just the thickness of the hose of the floor is all really losing as far as that water tank capacity of course with the vehicle moving or a little bit off tilt in camping situations as it always will be it doesn't really matter it's going to all equalize out and I'm rarely ever going to get all the way down to the very bottom of these tanks anyways let's hope I don't so I think I've got a good setup here for the batteries. It's not as ideal as I had laid out before with the way I'd laid it out. It's a little bit of a bummer that Chins did change the form factor's batteries. The height is the same, the length is the same, but the width is about an inch wider. And so it adds about two inches when you to my width when I've got three of them going across that are now the new ones that are an inch wider than my old ones here. So I have to lay it out this way. Obviously I have a little bit of a gap right here that you can see, that's no big deal. I'm gonna put a little bit of a, a spacer, I think anyways, in between these two. And so it'll hold those in place. And that'll also allow this bus here between these two to equal the same size bus between the other two batteries here so that they're all exactly the same as far as resistivity of their busways, their wires and so forth and all their connections. You probably ask, well then, what about these are four inches from stud to stud, four inches further apart from where the links will be than these ones are. And that is true, they are. So what I have to do really in order to accommodate that is you just accept that these batteries will have a little more resistance, which is a you know minor, especially when using big wire that can always upsize the wire from these ones from say a two watt to a four watt and cover that resistance and that'll be done, it'll be covered. So they'll be the same. Or what I can do, my plan has been, is just have a little bit of extra wire in these other wires here. And so a little bit of slack in them, right? And that's one way to deal with it. And I will make that call when I kind of do some calcs on it and see which one's gonna weigh less and, and work out better. And so once I bring this batter, this batter a little bit forward and put a spacer in there to keep it contained, I can also put a little spacer here if I need to. So that way it'll keep these batteries from moving around so it'll be locked in. Lock them in as horizontal over their tops. I'll put some bars to lock those in going across there and also create my mounts for my link distributors and my wires to run across. So I'll go ahead and get something set up for that. Not a big deal, but this seems to be the best setup. And that way I don't have to cut the bottom of these cabinets out, just that one piece, and essentially clean it up re and re-glue a new piece back in an inch in. If I do an inch in from each side, I've gained my two inches, so then I'm good. So that's the other way to do it. And I think I'd prefer to do it that way, be cleaner, neater, and I'd be happier with it in the long run. But the rallies is not going to make any difference. The wire runs and lengths are going to be nearly the same or identical in either direction, either way. It's, it'll still be just as accessible and it'll still work just as well. It just isn't as uniform of a layout. That's all it is. So I think it's going to work fine. But we're going to go with that. Keep this thing moving. I got a lot to do. I have a long list of things to do this weekend to get done, build these cabinets, more cabinets for the bed area, the kitchen, the shower, bath, all this stuff, keep this stuff moving. So we get through one problem and move on with a little bit of changes to electrical layout. Not a big deal. It's gonna work great and still be fine. And now we gotta move on to more of this cabinetry framing, get it built out, add more water tanks, certainly lay out more of the electrical and get into a big plumbing mess.